There it goes. Hey, this is Sherry Bear 348, and we have Mark and Zach in the house, and me, Joe D, is your host, and uh, welcome to our little virtual pub table here in the comforts of your own living room, Dan, wherever you're at, but uh, heck, we've even had some people on their mobile phones uh, mm -hmm. walking around, um, just checking things out. I did go... Uh, one of the things that I did today was my first trip to Panera Bread and got me some cookies and uh, some other goodies. They have a good broccoli cheese soup. Mm -hmm. yep, the soup. soups did look good. Yeah, they have, they have good soups. I had mm. their, um, what was it, butternut? No, that was at Corner Bakery, which is kind of similar to Panera Bread, but they, I, they had a butter. I like Corner Bakery. Yeah, they had a, a butternut squash soup, kind of a seasonal soup. It was pretty tasty. Nice. Mm. It's probably the same broccoli cheese soup with just, uh, instead of broccoli, they just put in butternut squash. It's probably the same stuff, just take out the broccoli and put in butternut squash. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, it was good. It, you know, uh, of course, the smell of fresh bread just kind of, oh, I'm in the right place. Right? It just kind of comforts you a little bit. Uh, so there's nothing wrong with that. But um, what beer are you drinking there, Mark? I am drinking a Highland Oatmeal Porter. Highland Brewing out of Asheville. Oh, okay, Carolina. yeah. Yep. And this is a... I have this beer just about every year. Uh, it's a just a good, solid oatmeal. It's a porter instead of a stout. A lot of times you see oatmeal stouts. Right. That's five point nine percent. So right in the uh, right in the zone as far as what a uh, uh, you know a porter is, and uh, it's got some real nice dark roasty roasty flavors um, with that little bit of the creaminess that the oatmeal gives. So it's a very nice, very good beer. Nice winter beer, and it goes well with uh, you know with ice cream and that type of stuff. So. Oh, I know, man, because, you know, winter is settling in here for sure. I mean, it's definitely chilly. It's, you know, what, oh, 60 or something like that. Oh, my you know. God. Jeez. It, it's getting low 70s, uh, you know, during the day. It's, uh, you know, winter is winter is here, man. Yeah, got the park. People got the parkas on, the fur-lined hoods. The parkas, yeah. Uh -huh. Fur-lined fur -line hoods, beanies, full parka, and shorts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Turtlenecks and short shorts. <laughs> yeah, that's how we roll here, man. That's how, that's how we roll. Someone, someone was telling me. Uh, it was funny. Too, someone was just telling me yesterday. It must be nice to be wearing shorts in the middle of December. I'm like, you bet your ass it is. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That's great. Yeah. They were, and it, you know, it was funny, Mark, because they were telling me, you wouldn't be wearing them shorts if you're from where I'm from. And I'm like, really? Where are you from? I'm from Albuquerque. I'm like, oh, I'll be damned. <laughs> you know what's funny, though, is there's people in well, Colorado, too, that just wear shorts all year round. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, they'll, they, you know, they may have a sweatshirt and a jacket and on, but they'll, they'll still be wearing shorts in the middle of winter with the snow out, you know? So mm -hmm. They're like the Mario Batalis. <laughs> he always wears he always wears shorts no matter where he is. Shorts oh, and clothes, right, huh? I guess. Yeah. Yeah, that's the cooking guy, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yep. That dude can cook some food, man. Oh. Yeah. I love Italian food. Oh. And Zach, what do you drink, my friend? I have to go find something out of the fridge, so I will be right back. Oh, okay. Zach's fridge of surprise. Surprises. Yeah. And we'll find out yeah. what, he, what he's got. And after this, I got a blue moon. Oh, <laughs> seasonal, seasonal. I want Zach's opinion on it. I, mean, I don't know if he's had it or not, but it's a it's a blue moon specialty beer. I didn't I didn't have anything unusual. I had more Magic Hat number nine. Uh, okay. Yeah, I didn't have anything real different or unusual. Just mm -hmm. uh, this this weekend for me, that is. Um, just more of the same. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. 
and and that's a good beer. It's not it's not uh, you know anything real crazy, but it, it's a good solid beer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is it a um, what's it supposed to be like a like a pale ale type? Yeah. Yeah. They call it a what, what do they call it like a not so pale ale or something? Yeah. Okay. And Bum says he's making a for lovers only imperial style uh, from Parkway Brewing. <laughs> I love that. Do you really? That's the first time heck I'm even hearing about it. He said, "Steve Gregg's beer reviews 1810." Oh, there you go, fact checker. <laughs> yeah. I was just about ready to ask you, Bum. I said, I'm <laughs> Okay, yeah, Salem, yeah. Virginia. Okay, that's that's pretty much in Greg's backyard right now. I wow. love that nice little just, He's just like, yeah, he is. He's like, he's like the the ultimate fact checker for share mm-hmm. beer. Oh, he's the he's the official share beer fact checker. I mean, there's no doubt about it. Oh. Yeah, there's just no. Of course, everything we say is 100 percent true on the show. Oh it's come on, we, we don't really need a fact checker. Yeah. But it, it just gives more credit yeah. to the show. You know, people we, feel we appreciate better. his effort, even though he never finds anything wrong that we say. I mean, <laughs> we're always right. <laughs> Please, what could there be, right? <laughs> Error? What's that? <laughs> yeah. What is that, right? You know. <laughs> See, the thing about share beer is, the more beers you share, the less the more concerned you are about errors. <laughs> the, the, the more accurate you are, right? Because, right you know, yeah, I mean, errors have a small or much smaller portion of everything. I mean, that, that's more, right. The more you drink, yeah. the more accurate it, you become. It's like, no, really. You could check that. Yeah. You know? <laughs> At least in your own mind, you become accurate. <laughs> Google that. Yeah, Google that, damn it. <laughs> right. Because that's really how, how people are going to check any damn thing, right? Is They're going to go to the Google on it, you know? Oh, yeah. yeah. So I've got this uh, article here. We'll jump right into it, and it's um, it's titled uh, 10 Beers Americans Are No Longer Drinking." I wanted to go through it. I thought it'd be fun to talk about, mm-hmm. um, and so here we go. Let's see. It's a USA Today article, and of course, the top part of it is going through, you know, all the. Uh, I'll give you this little section here. The new company, uh, you know, it's about the the, the Anheuser Busch, uh, Sab Miller merger, right? Mm-hmm. And how the overall beer sales have gone down for for the two giants, right? Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> but it's kind of um, uh, funny to me because in right here, like it says, uh, uh, the once unsaleable beers such as Budweiser or Miller Light. Oh, Miller High Life have seen sales decline by more than 25 percent from 2009 to 2014. Then he says next. Meanwhile, such uh, meanwhile sales of such beers as Modelo, Stella Artois, uh, once more marginal brands in the United States have more than doubled. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm like, yeah, no crap. I mean, they, of course they have. They're owned by who? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like some of his uh, things here just didn't make any sense. So anyway, he starts with number one, Bud Select. Yeah, fuck that beer. <laughs> exactly right. It's I mean, from 2009 to 14, it's down. Are you sure 60%. The, the article wasn't just mistitled "10 Beers That America Quit Drinking"? Ten years. I, I know, right? Yeah, because some of that is. Yeah, ten years ago. No, I think there's a few in here that I might have had within the last year. That's why I wanted to see what the list said. The so Bud Select, and that's down sixty percent. Okay, yeah. some some of these I really think that, well, like Bud Select. I, I mean, they put this oh. beer out there. I, I don't even know that they're hardly making it. I don't. I don't know that they really expect that beer to stick around. Was uh, Was Bud Select supposed to be? Um, Kind of their version of what Coors does that one. Um, was it Henry something? Oh, yeah, it, Henry Weinhardt's. Yeah, it, they did the Henry Weinhardt's, which was supposed to be like Coors Select recipe. Yeah. No, this was supposed to be their reduced calorie beer. Uh, 
it, it only had 99 calories. Um, okay. You know what I'm saying? It was it went down that hole. You you, you remember that it, all the big breweries were coming out with all these beers that had reduced calories, yeah. and trying to see what stuck. And Bud Select was one of them that just didn't. You know. Mm-hmm. See, I still drink MGD. I drink yeah. I drink quite a bit of MGD. Do you really? Yeah, I've had I've had I, I like it. best, and I've had Milwaukee. Uh, Miller Genuine Draft in the last. I haven't months. had Milwaukee's best, but I can tell you, you know, like I bet you every every four months I probably buy a twelve pack of uh, MGD. Yeah, yeah. I, I never, you know, you like when I'm kind of like on that mood of like, ah, I don't really want Pabst, I don't really want a banquet Coors. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't really want an old style like that. Would be like my fourth or fifth like. Mm-hmm. You know what? I I I never been an MGD guy. I just didn't like the taste of it. But w- one of the beers that I would go to instead of that would be Michelob. See, I haven't even seen Michelob in stores, and I can't tell you how long. Yeah, Michelob is is one of those that I still see it everywhere. Really, mm-hmm. you know. See, um, we just don't see it up here. Which I I thought Michelob uh, Amberbach was always one of my my favorites. Yeah, that's what I was just gonna say. I had I had a I got a six pack of Amberbach last month, and it was yeah. I, I think Amberbach yeah. is a good beer. Um, mm-hmm. I always I always called it Belgian it, it, beer. I never remember anybody ever drinking Michelob unless they were on a fucking boat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious, man. Why would you say that? Why why I would it only no be people idea. on boats? I have that's what I remember as a kid. Like I always just thought it was <laughs> you got on a boat and they had Michelob. I was trying to remember as we're talking about it some of the Michelob commercials. I just can't remember. I bet they all have uh, boats in them. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm I trying to think of. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, and then when you go to the next page of this this article, it's weird how it goes because I had to go to like you know how they're numbered one, two, three, and four uh, pages. So like in order to get to the next. You know, where you stop at three here to get to four mm-hmm. was like on page three at the bottom. Yeah, See, it, yeah. it goes. Okay, yeah. So we're getting to yeah. So okay. So in so any four, case, you have, you have light Bud Light lime, lime, which makes a lot of sense that it's on here because they put that beer out there. It's another one of their experimental beers. They put that beer out there. It's dropping forty three percent. But what have they done with Bud Light Lime? They made Bud Light Lime Lime Marita. And yeah. dear God, tell me that's declining sales, please. Yeah, there's no way that that has a, that that's declining. I mean, yeah. Bud Light Lime may have. Yeah, but, but Lime Lime Arita is, you know, those sales are up. I would imagine. Oh, please don't don't even start with Rita Nation. I mean, they'll they'll jump your ass. <laughs> one point one one point one million barrels. That's just Joe's intake of Lime Arita. <laughs> exactly, <Yeah. laughs> dude. That's a lot of barrels, isn't it? Dear God, um, that's two point two million kegs. Jesus. Times that, so two point two million times fifteen and a half. Mark. Uh, yeah, something like that. that's a lot. Fifteen. Yeah, in <laughs> yeah, Mark's when Mark has to just go, it's a it's lot. Like it's a lot. Four million gallons, right? Yeah, yeah. thirty-four million gallons or something. See what what ended up happening with Bud Light Lime specifically on the on this number four of this list, it may the the actual sales of Bud Light Lime may have gone down forty three percent, but they ended up making a brand out of Bud Light Lime. Yeah. Yeah. So you tell me how unsuccessful that beer was, because they ended up using that for a brand. Well, but if you look at the beers that it was surpassed by, Stella, which hit its you know. It was kind of in its big heyday right in those few years. Mm-hmm. Dos Equis, which got a huge push from Coors. Right. Blue Moon, which has just become its own deal. And Modelo, who once they broke off of the AB and Bev thing and went with the 
whoever has them now that we were talking about last week. Yeah. Um, it's you know, Budweiser, isn't it? That that's what we were looking at, but then if you look up... Um, it, it ended up becoming Budweiser. No, but well, it's it, not Budweiser it, anymore. Is the Because there's a third largest... Let me see... Uh, there was a there's another company that owns like all of those. Uh, let's see where is it? Constellation. So if you look up Constellation Beverage. Yeah, because it was who owned Constellation. I think was the was the last. Uh, Yeah, I don't. I don't, it, I don't think I ever found who owned Constellation, Brands, <clears throat> but they, in their lineup, um, Corona, yeah. Svedka Vodka, Modelo, Arbor Mist, Ravenswood Wine. Um, let's see. Let's just go to the beer. Yeah, Corona, Modelo, Corona Light, Negro Modelo, Pacifico, Victoria, and Modelo Especial Chalada. Oh, the Chalada. Oh, yeah. Oh, I don't like But under that, under that branding is Svetka Vodka, Black Velvet, Casa Noble. Right. You've seen that makes all sense. See, because you, you, when it all gets down to it, Budweiser owns that. And the reason I say that confidently is because uh, my new beer guy gets me all those all any of those beers or wines or spirits he can get me. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sure Bud distributes it is the thing. So Budweiser and Bud Distrib BDC are totally two different companies. Bud distributing and then Coors has distribution as well. Those are two right. separate companies from, from the actual beer company, um, which is. What I think probably Constellation probably owns these brands, and then Bud distributes them. But in in any case, though, to, to move on from that, we've got uh, Milwaukee's best down forty forty percent best light. Milwaukee's best light. Uh, that's like a, a pure. Uh, Alky beer right there, isn't it? I mean, that's... <laughs> Milwaukee's best light. Yeah. <laughs> and then, because uh, that, that, that beer is like what? It, it, I think that's like 10 bucks a 30 or something. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's probably like 13 or $15 a 30 pack, isn't it? Then, then you've Old Mill, right? And that's... Uh, one of the fastest shrinking beer brands in the United States, he says. Wow. Old uh, Milwaukee. I've had, old I Mil had, I've had that in, in the summer in Old Milwaukee. And then Tecate is on here, 29.4% uh, decline. And that's owned by Heineken, he says clearly here. Um, see, and, and that's, <clears throat> that's, what, that's what gets me because you have other... Mexican brands that are owned by, you know, by InBev, right? And 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 they've just been marketing the hell out of them. One of them's Modelo. Modelo has just like, in seriously grown in sales, uh, be, because of the, the the marketing that they have now with uh, their parent company. And <clears throat> uh, Corona has grown leaps and bounds for Christ's sake. And and I don't I don't believe they're putting Tecate out there enough. They they said they made a uh, right here. He says they made a record uh, deal, five point six million dollars uh, to sponsor the uh, Floyd Mayweather Pacquiao fight. Um, but other than that, I don't I don't hear about Tecate anywhere. I mean, I, it, you know, I I've, I've lived in the Southwest for for a long time, so yeah, of course I see a lot of Tecate. But mm -hmm. uh, I can just imagine in other parts of the world, I don't, I don't hear of people drinking it outside of the Southwest. You know, mm -hmm. I don't know. I it's in the stores here, and people buy it, but they, you know, they'll, t they'll take out dollyfuls of uh, 
uh, you know, Corona <laughs> and Modelo right. before, yeah. they'll take out, before they'll take out six ca- cases stacked on top of each other of Takati. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's just not. And, and then I went to, and then I went from page three to page two <laughs> to get to the end of this list and then scroll yeah. to the bottom first. <laughs> So this, I don't I don't know I, I'm sure whoever wrote this was just as upset at what uh, 247wallist.com did to their yep. special report. But in any case, uh, Miller High Life is is number eight on this list. Twenty three, twenty seven point three percent. It's it's another one of those good ones. You, you know, Miller High Life I I feel like is the same thing as Budweiser as far as like. It has taken a number two, right, and mm-hmm. in, in, in probably literally, if you want to take the pun there, um, to its light version of the beer. So I think Miller Miller Light has just surpassed its its parent uh, beer, right? And same thing with Bud Light, but you know, Bud only went down in sales because Bud Light has just grown like a root, you know. But it also says at the end of the article, Miller Light has declined by 18.4% during the same period. Yeah. yeah. So Miller Light is also pretty quickly down. decreasing. Yeah. Which I think it's just people are buying Bud Coors Corona, you know. Right. And I think Miller's getting shoved off to the side. Yeah, exactly. As a whole, yeah, as a whole brand. Yeah, because I think it, it would, when it comes to Miller, I think more people are buying Blue Moon now. I think a lot of the Miller sales have gone to just the other side of that, and, and they started on Blue Moon. And and their stuff happened recently, but just for the purposes of his 2009-2014, uh, <clears throat> a lot of those things were still. In, in flow, you know, so that, mm-hmm. you know, the, the Blue Moon was part of the big brand there, so uh, I, I think that's where some, a lot of their sales have gone. A lot of these, you know, the big companies bought up uh, some of these other crafty type beers, quote unquote, and started putting a lot of marketing to them, and hell, your sales got to go somewhere. Mm hmm. Uh, you have Natural Light down 26.6 percent. Uh, parent company but, uh, Budweiser. Now highs are in Bev really. <clears throat> As 6.8 million barrels in 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 one year. Dear God, uh, how would you like to have that? <laughs> you know, and that's a decline. <laughs> you yeah. know, 20. You know, 26 percent. That's a, yeah, that's pretty still doing, yeah, yeah, still yeah. doing seven million. Well, natural ice. Now, see, natural ice isn't on that on that page. I mean, that's yeah. skyrocketing. Yeah. Okay, I finally figured all this constellation. <laughs> He's been doing his own fact checking here. Yeah. Right. So in two thousand in June of two thousand three, constellation brands. Uh, acquired Grupo Modelo USA from AB InBev for $4.75 billion. That includes Corona, Corona Light, Modelo, Negro Modelo, Pacifico, and Victoria. Um, And it also includes uh, the weird one from China that starts with a T. Oh, Sing... Sing Tao. Sing Tao. Yeah, um, that's so actually the, not a bad one either. So n- all of those are actually not Budweiser or, or anymore. Uh, they are as of two thousand three. They are not. Okay. Uh, those are Constellation brands now, which Constellation brands is apparently the largest wine company in America. In America, okay. Or no, in the world it's. A, oh, in the world. It's the largest wine like producer or whatever. Whatever, all, right. All these different kinds of wines. <clears throat> all right. Well, well that's cool. So we, we got that we got that part settled. Got that one out of the way three weeks later. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, but that's good to know. Yeah. So, th- so there is a wine player in there. Uh, you mm-hmm. know, 
Uh, well, and these guys do wine and spirits. I mean, Svetka Vodka is huge. Yeah. I mean, that's a big ass company. Um, Arbor Mist. I mean, in the yeah. like really like not good looking housewife category, that's probably a really good drink. <laughs> Arbor Mist. Have you? I've never had an Arbor Mist. I, I just had one last night. That's because oh, you're not good. a you're not an ugly housewife, Joe. Did you really, Mark? No. <laughs> I've seen it in the stores, but I've I've never purchased one, so I don't know. Yeah, Arbor Mist. I mean, that's one of those that I've heard about for a long time, and I've never actually had an Arbor Mist. I, I I tell you what had to be killing what had to be killing Barrick was looking at all this uh, Amazon camera advertising on on the site here as I was uh... oh yeah <laughs> it, it knows. It wants, Amazon wants to sell you a camera Joe yeah, <laughs> yeah dude, you get... find cameras you better buy one yeah I, I wonder what I've been looking at on Amazon it's all right here that way yeah. you can see one. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I wonder. I wonder what I've been looking for. <laughs> oh, look at there's this 7D Mark II right here for yeah. <laughs> you know. Let me see what's know. on mine. I'm on, I'm on that article too, so I'm getting. Uh, yeah, what are you getting? I'm getting some Amazon stuff. Uh, I'm getting like I haven't been looking at cameras because I can't I can't afford one right now. I've been looking at Kindles, so Amazon keeps advertising Kindles for the me. The Kindles, okay, yeah. See that's and some financial stuff. Financial. Yeah, stuff, so. yeah. So you can see definitely Amazon here and yeah. definitely cameras. Oh, buy it, just buy it. That 7D Mark, what is that? Thir yeah, yeah, 7D Mark II for 13.99. Get it? Don't yeah, 13. It? Yeah. See now this is this is how screwed up things are. Because you've got a 7D Mark II body only for 13.99, and then you've got the 7D Mark II with uh, oh. a 32 gig hard uh, 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 card and a camera case for 12.29. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, right? Gee, which one are you gonna buy, Joe? And buy then both. And, buy both. and then here's a 6D. Who on God's earth would pay 1,300 bucks, 1,400 bucks for a 6D right now? Somebody. <laughs> yeah, somebody. Yeah, you ain't kidding. Prime not, shipping. Come on. Not me. And then, and then number ten on this list was Budweiser, uh, at, at twenty six percent, and and a mere fourteen point four million barrels in two thousand fourteen. Hello. That's a lot of barrels. <laughs> you think? You wow. know? I mean, I would think. I would think. Okay, and this is my. Pure ignorance here, my just my pure. I, I mean, I would think the only thing making more barrels in fourteen would be Bud Light. That's like two hundred and forty million gallons of water. That's a lot of water. Well, and then if you think about the actual like, most breweries use like triple the amount of water that goes into the beer. That's true. It's yeah, but it's you, you wash and sanitize and all that stuff. Well, and with loss, you know, uh, yeah. I mean, it's some pretty crazy stuff to think about yeah. how many gallons of water. A lot of water goes into making beer. A lot of water. And and then, yeah, and, and then when you go for, to the big breweries, when they're shipping it, um, you know, they're washing off the cans, they're washing out your trailer, they're, they're, I mean, they're using an incredible amount of water. Now, they do regain some of that because when you drink a beer, you pee out about twice as much as you drink. <laughs> so, well, and there's back part of it. There's some of them that do really good as far as uh, they almost have their own water treatment plants. I mean, yeah, yeah, that's true. They do. Mark, have you got to go up to that new New Belgium up in there in Asheville? No, I have not. I, I hear it's just incredible how green that place is. Like, yeah, it's you know, it's not. I'm want to make a trip up there this spring and take a look at the Sierra Nevada, the uh, Oscar Blues is up there, uh, New Belgium, and just you know, just spend like a long weekend up there. Because we haven't been up there in a few years. It's a fun place to go. Now, the, the, the next one I have here uh, that we could talk about is, I didn't necessarily want to talk about the brewery itself. 
I just wanted to talk more about what they're doing. I kind of like what the idea of what they're doing. And it's Epic Brewing uh, launches Utah exclusive session series of beers. And, and you guys know I, I, I like that idea. All these beers are 4% ABV that you see in the picture. Uh, so they have a session IPA. What uh, the fuck is Google doing in my face? Like, do you guys see all these green bars? Oh, yeah. No, yeah. they've been doing it's that. Scanning, it's scanning you, Zach. It's like, okay, well, he right. just switched over to Chrome. Let's find out if it's the real Zach. <laughs> Maybe it's an imposter Zach from an alternate universe. Holy shit. I, that's that's uh, Google, you know, putting it all over your face. <laughs> <All right. laughs> <laughs> They're just making sure, they're like, wait a minute, this guy's been dissing us and using Internet Explorer yeah. for the last four years. All of a sudden, he hasn't dropped an F-bomb on Google yet, and he's using, he's using yeah. Chrome. You just, got a, you just got a Google digital facial, my friend. Right. <laughs> no, I, I love those guys over at Epic. I think it's a cool deal. Yeah. I, I think that is, man. They even made a sour IPA in a session series. I, I really like the idea of that. Of I, I think more it only Utah is interesting. You what? Keeping it only in Utah is kind of interesting, though. Yeah, yeah, isn't it? Isn't it? I mean, that's well, but I guess I mean they can't sell most of their brand. I, I that's why they moved to Colorado years ago. Um. A few years back, is they couldn't really sell anything that they were making. They were making all these great beers, but they couldn't sell them in Utah. Mm -hmm. um, and now I guess it's like, well, we got the brewery out here, and I know they do like Utah, but mm -hmm. you know they have a beer called Escape for, Escape to Colorado just because of that. Yeah, well, I mean, they're apparently making a whole session. Series for Utah. I mean, they even got the Utah. Hell, it says Utah Session Series. I mean, that's well. If you can't beat the law, why not just go around it? Yeah, yeah. you know, you've got the brewery there. The sales are there. You just have to. You know, Utah's never going to change. Well, no, and and it it's so it's um it's a uh, twenty two ounce bombers is the series. Uh, and it'll be in stores in January 2016. Wow. Okay. And they've partnered with General Distributing Company, <clears throat> uh, Utah's craft-focused beer distributor, who will be uh, distributing across Salt Lake Valley. Hmm. Um, See, I always find how, how it's weird that Utah is so anti-alcohol, like alcohol, but yet they have a brewery in their airport. Yeah. Strange deal. It's a weird, weird combination, isn't it? <laughs> it you know, it, it's weird to me that you get like all these weird little uh, r rules when it comes to beer. Still, you know what I'm saying? Like the, you can, you know, a, a winery can ship their wine. Some, somehow, it's okay to ship something higher ABV, mm -hmm. but beer, you, you know, they can't. You know, there's all these restrictions and and stuff. And it's on because of the distributors, right? Right. It's back to the three three tier system, right? <clears throat> you know, but a winery just, I mean, it, and 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 other places like Total Wine and so forth can ship you wine, no problem. Mm -hmm. You know, not not to Colorado because we don't allow Total Wine here. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> oh really? No. Allowed Total Wine? No, Total Wine's think... a uh, massive corporation. Yeah, they're they're they anti could, that. They could, they could open one here, but that would be that's the only <clears> one <throat> that they could do. Like, we have our Whole Foods that, you know, it's like a bar, but only one of them in the state can be like that. Uh, mm -hmm. See, they, but they do allow Snoop Dogg to sell many varieties of weed there. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's okay because that's not too big of a brand. No, no, that's not. it's just one guy. It's just one guy. He's just one guy. You know what I'm saying? And it's they, what they need to do. What they do? <laughs> He's got ten different kinds of weed. 
did he sell it? You know, Snoop Dogg. What what was it called? Leafs, Leafs by Snoop or something? Yeah. Uh, that is hey, so. You know, he's 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 a hell of a marketer, man. Why not? You know, I, you, you know they, they need to. Be, I think what he needs to do in Colorado, since they can't have Total Wine, is make a place called Total Weed. <laughs> hey, there you go. Better get the trademark. You know. Weed. Yeah, it's just Total you weed. know, you can you can sell you know. Bunts on one side, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like the weed superstore. I'm sure they're gonna. Don't they have one? I'm. They gotta have like a weed superstore now, right? I mean, it's a like one-stop stores. shop. There's some like bigger ones. Okay. I don't know. It's weird. I went into. I went into one the other week. I mean, it's. They lock them things down. Oh yeah. Oh so, yeah. So when you walk in, you walk in and it's like. You're kind of in like a lobby, mm -hmm. and then there's a lady there behind bulletproof glass, behind a bulletproof like door and everything. You have to give her your ID and like another form of identification, and then like they scan you into the computer, make sure there's no warrants out for you, and then they buzz the door, and then they let you in, and then you're not allowed to pass until that door is completely closed. Hmm. behind you and then you have to go around the corner and then it's recreational and medical and if you don't have your red card you're not allowed on that other side hmm. they'll yell at you so so what's the difference recreational and medical what what is it strength strength and then it's tax different oh okay so you pay less tax probably for medical uh, yeah yeah because yeah, then it's a need and not a want you get, you get, right yeah you, so get, that, that's cheap, the you, get cheap, you get your weed cheap if you need it. If you yeah. just want it, you pay extra for it. Right, yeah. Well, well and um, recreational can only go up to a certain potency. And then, like, medical can just, like, get you completely fucked. Yeah. I mean, you still feel <laughs> so who in their right mind would get anything other than medical? You know what yeah. I'm saying? Who in some, their right mind? Some people are just lazy. It's like, oh, I couldn't stop by the dock on the oh, way. Oh, so no, exactly. Not, not weed smokers. Weed smokers are, are lazy. Highly motivated individuals. <laughs> 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 Isn't that crazy? Like, what other, you, you, and I'm trying to say, like, what other customer is could you lock down that much and they still come to you? And mm -hmm. I was thinking, you know, I used to go to Costco a lot. Uh -huh. Costco used to be like that too. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. you 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 go there and, and you just paid for your whole cart of whatever, and they're still like, oh no, you can't leave till I check your receipt. You know? Are you kidding me? What's that doing? You know? Yeah. I'm stealing a case of like a whole pallet worth of paper towels. Damn it! Leave me alone. <laughs> I've got to go to my truck and get the forklift out of the back. Yeah, I'm stealing a whole uh, pallet of toilet paper, man. Do you really want to be around me right now? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I kind of got a little problem. You know what I'm saying? <sighs> yeah, Bum says he's starting to hallucinate, Zach, watching you. Yeah, me too. <laughs> it's, all them, it's all them edible gummy fish that I got from the pot store. I think I think it's going according to your voice, too, if I'm not... It, it, it might... I'm <laughs> I don't know if it is. Is that something you did, or is or is that just on there? Not unless I clicked some stupid button, which is very possible. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that that is weird. Okay, all right, Zach, I got a quick a test for you. You always say every Blue Moon stuff kind of tastes the same. Have you ever had this one? Which one's that? The gingerbread house one, or whatever they call it, yeah. gingerbread spice. Yeah, <laughs> I got a, I got a six pack of it. It's the same shit, isn't it? I mean, it's a little darker. It's a little darker, and it tastes like um, cinnamon and nutmeg slightly, and it's a little sweeter. It's a sweet cinnamon and nutmeg blue moon. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Okay, here I've got another one here, and this is <clears throat> I love list, right? And this is, and I was kind of wondering, this is from. SC Times, here you go. 
Um, dot com. So this is from the south over there. But six of the top winter warmer beers, and I was kind of wondering how it came up with six. I'm like, why not five or ten? Well, of course, when I read it here, here's a six pack sampler of some of the most popular winter warmer beers, and I was like, ah, there you go. That was clever. That was clever. So a, a nice little pat on the back for uh, to uh, Jay. What is this, Laxon? Lakeson? from uh, stcloudtimes.com. But in any case, here is a list of six of uh, the top winter warmers. So you got Christmas Ale from Great Lakes, 7.5% uh, seven, 7 ABV, uh, Cold Mountain uh, Winter Ale from uh, Highland uh, Brewing, and then you've got a Festive Ale from Sweetwater. Oh, that's a good one. That's a very good beer. Very good. 8.6%. 8 <clears throat> um, isolation uh, from Odell, six uh, percent uh, ABV. That's a good one for sure. Uh, Jubilee, you know, I love that one. That's mm -hmm. a six point seven percent from uh, Shoots. And Winter Solstice uh, from Anderson Valley, Boonville, uh, California, uh, six point nine percent. So here's the. Well, up to that. If you could make your own top six must try beers of, let's say, the season, what are your six must have beers? Oh. Well, I like, I like uh, Sierra Nevada Celebration is a good solid, uh, that's a kind of an annual one, but that's pretty tasty. Uh, I would add I would add Sweetwater Festival is one of mine. Uh, this Blue Moon probably not. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I had that Blue Moon or Chata one, and that was I mean, it was all right, but you know. Uh, man, um, what's that uh, that new the new New Belgium one that they released um, last year? The one with Ben and Jerry's. No. They just put out the Ben and Jerry's. It's a salted caramel chocolate brownie. I had a I had a six pack of that and that was very good. That was a very good one. Yeah, Mark had it already. Yeah, I had a six pack of that. Uh, is it snowed in? No, that's not it. It was a uh... snowed in is a good one. Um, mm -hmm. That's a like a winter IPA, I think. Isn't it? Yeah, I would add, and it's not really seasonal, but I'd add Bigfoot in there. I mean, that's kind of like. That's a that's a January appearance pretty much. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, that's a every year it's it's just a little different but still very very good. That I three fifty. Oh yeah, that our fact checker show three fifty is the last show before Christmas. Before Christmas. And is that? Let me see. What 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 is that? that uh... It's going to be, what is it today, the 8th? That's going to be the 23rd or 22nd? Yeah, it's going to be the 22nd. I won't be here that night. I have a cheese pairing. Cheese pairing? Cool. Yeah, I'm teaching a cheese class. Wow. You're teaching a cheese class? Cheese and beer class. Wow. Really? Oh, that's cool. cool. Mm hmm any, any, Anything you can share with us? Any Almighty cheeses? Um, Almighty cheesy one? This will be uh, like the third one I've done now. So, um, oh, it's just kind of fun that uh, I take and it's forty bucks, and I get together with the cheese guy, and we sit down and drink a couple of six packs of. I bring in six beers, and we just pretty much go through his whole lineup of cheese and find the best one, and then for forty bucks you get whatever. It's like. An, ounce to two ounces of that cheese, um, mm -hmm. you know, the, it's a couple of slices, and then a four-ounce pour, pour that beer with some crackers and olives and stuff, um, mm -hmm. and we just go through on how to taste some things, and, uh, you know, what about cheese can really bring out certain beer characters in a beer, and mm -hmm. um, just about furthering the palate, kind of, and teaching yeah, you how sure. How to really start understanding how to use your palate. Cool. Uh, there was a really good um, 
I paired my red ale with a cheese uh, called Manchango, which was really good. It's a big, earthy cheese. Um, mm. That one went over well. Uh, Gorgonzola goes really well with my pale ale. Mm -hmm. um, and are you just having the cheese by itself or with any sort of bread or cracker? Um, I, I like people to taste it, just the cheese itself. Take a bite, bite of cheese. Kind of let it get creamy in your mouth. <laughs> it's just a softball pitch for Joe there. <laughs> it's all part of the experience. <laughs> As long as you look up quietly at me during, it's okay. <laughs> That's, freaking... <laughs> That's freaking great, right? <laughs> oh, man, that's awesome. So, uh... <laughs> yeah, I, I like that they try them just without the cracker for the first few bites just because... Yeah. You can really start getting some stuff. The one of the in, most interesting pairings we did on the last one was uh, it was uh, a, a Gruyere cheese um, that was aged in a, uh, a saltwater <coughs> um, rind. Mm. So it was really, and we paired that with the uh, the orange cream ale. Um, Oh. Which was really neat because it was like this really creamy, uh, good cheese, but it went perfect with the texture of the beer and a little bit of fruitiness. But then that salted rind on it just brought the citrus so far forward. Um, it was just, you know, people don't realize to make a good, like, orange, like an orange Julius, part of the recipe is adding a teaspoon of salt. I mean, anytime you're baking, think about you add salt to really kind of add to mm -hmm. stuff. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 No, I'm definitely familiar with uh, you know adding salt to salt to stuff when you're when you're cooking for sure. You know? And that, that's what's so beautiful about cheese is it is kind of it's a salty thing that just goes really well with the beer. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we provide crackers and. Um, Especially for certain stuff, like uh, we have the Belgian rice stout, which uh, so we did a uh, really sweet blue cheese with it. It was almost like a dessert blue cheese. Really? But we pair yeah, but we paired it up with uh, on top of a rye cracker that was really nice. So it had like this deep rye breadiness that just went so good with the stout. Huh, a sweet blue cheese. I don't know that I've had that. Yeah, it was, it was a dolce, I believe. Was it real, real soft or hard? Really, really soft. I mean, the consistency of like a, <laughs> the consistency of like a, I don't know, like cool. <laughs> it was so like it was dense, kind of dense cool. Whip. <laughs> So that was kind of the soft chub. Um, yeah. <laughs> All right, bum. Statistician at the moment. Um, Seven fifty-seven Eastern Time. The bus just went off the cliff. Yeah, the valley. Official stat statistician. Oh man. That was good. You know, we were doing good until we started talking. Jeez. Oh, <laughs> Soft, creamy cheese. In your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> that is great. <laughs> so I have a serious cheese question here, Zach. Okay. Are you going to do any, uh, any uh, washed rind cheeses? Does the cheese oh, guy... Yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll like real stinky cheese then, huh? Yeah, we'll get into some of that. The, the past two people I've done it with, um, 
Like we did one that was more just straight up aged cheddars. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, some whites and some yellows, um, all the way up to some ten-year cheddars that were really impressive. Um, mm-hmm. And then the last one that I did was more focused on Italian, French cheeses, and uh, the blending of like goat and sheep milk. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. And that included two uh, two blue cheeses. Um, and then there was uh, so this one coming up. I I gotta meet with the guy next week to see. But yeah, I, like I don't know, Limburger's not that great. I don't no. think. Um, there's some really good stinky cheeses out there. Yeah, um, there are. I'd like to get into, you know, with some of the sour beers. And, mm-hmm. Yep, I think like a, like a nice uh, like a nice sour or something like that. Oh. And I've got a really cool. I just tried it the other day. Uh, we put the pink peppercorn into uh, some gin barrels, so Ooh. it is tasting just fabulous. You get that that juniper, right? Isn't that what you the big big thing yeah. you get out of the gin is the juniper berry. Yep. Yeah, juniper, um, and then it's aged in an oak barrel. Mm-hmm. And it's so, and that, and that pink peppercorn, you know, has its spicy and its berry and its mm-hmm. tart. Ooh, that would you be know, those really these are the, the these are the types of things that <clears throat> now still, I'm still not able to get in on some of these things. I'm not quite off in time for some. You know, that when I am off, I'm, I'm just so tired on a Saturday morning. Yeah. But these are the types of things they do at Total Wine that are really cool to get in on some of those things that they do. But uh, they have those, at least at the ones that are by me, huge classrooms in the back. Of, oh, yeah. And, uh, and, and they do those sorts of, you know, cheese and beer pairings and, and really educating you on beer and... and uh, it's pretty darn cool, you know. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's a lot of fun. I'm working with a guy that we're gonna do like a cured meat pairing. Um, Ooh, that would be good. He's got a company that's gonna get bought out by a or get distributed by a very popular baking company. Mm-hmm. Uh, have you guys had Tender Belly? <clears throat> no. If you can get your hands on some Tender Belly bacon, oh boy. It's <laughs> Um, but they're going to team up, and uh, so these guys do like all these kind of different salamis and pepperonis. Um, they do a uh, they do a duck salami, which is I've heard is really cool. They did a duck bacon, um, any kind of bacon. So we'll do like a bacon pairing. You know? Okay. Duck meat. Yeah. Duck. <laughs> Have you ever had a duck chin? <laughs> <laughs> I was at a Chinese restaurant one time. <laughs> didn't have a whole lot of English on the menu, and it just said duck chin, and I'm like, what the fuck is that? So, of course, you're sitting there like Googling, well, what is all this Chinese food? A duck chin is also a urban dictionary word for uh, uh, muscular vagina. Hmm. Is it really? Yeah. So you see a girl with a powerful. What? what? I kind of wonder. So what does a muscular vagina look like? Uh, I mean, uh, I'm not real sure, but breaking I mean, fingers. <laughs> <laughs> Just like a duck chin. Uh, so yeah. but now, now, did you order the duck chin? <laughs> That's what I want to know. No, I didn't do the duck chin. Oh. I got the Peking duck. The Peking duck. <laughs> oh, Peking duck man. chin. Yep. That is, oh my god. <laughs> oh, that is too funny. Oh. You know... <clears throat> Urban Dictionary is like the best thing in the world. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. That is funny. Yeah. What does a muscular vagina look like? I mean, what? Uh, I, I, I must know. not have ever seen one of those before. Is it kind of like, <laughs> Ur, Ur, you know, what, I mean, what does it do? Uh, I don't know. I'm kind of <laughs> scared. It lifts weights. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, I don't, I don't know that I want one that's extra muscular. 
I, I mean, don't know, man. We don't see you. Yeah. That, that, you know, that, that brings new meaning to Minuteman. <laughs> you know? They, 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 get, they get too muscular, you know? Yeah. <laughs> oh, Urban Dictionary, it just ruins everything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we have locals that just come in, hey, guess what I saw on Urban Dictionary? You know what tobogganing is? Fuck, I don't even want to say no. Mm-hmm. Oh my god. So, what is tobogganing? Yeah. Tobogganing is where you've got your girl uh, and you're doing her from behind at the top <laughs> of the stairway. <laughs> the rosy ass one. <laughs> at the top of the stairwell, and you pull her arms back and uh, you put her hair in your mouth and you push her down the stairs and ride her like a toboggan. Oh man. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you brought the rosy ass one. <laughs> Uh, oh. this, show, this show is definitely not getting along. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, my God. Oh, man, that's a riot, bro. Ronda Rousey has one. That's what Bum says. Yes. Oh, man, that's too funny. Oh, man. <laughs> that's that's a good one to go out on right there, man. That's like that's like a that's like a holiday theme. That you know, I'm gonna use that for the show title, bum. That's a good one, I think. Ronda Rousey has one. That's that's kind of funny right there. Yeah. What the fuck's happening? I don't I don't I don't I don't know who. Uh, what is that? It looks like he's singing or something. What is it? What is he doing? There? <laughs> I don't know. And, and, yeah. it's weird. I so, don't know. Yo, know, this show's going a really bad way. So yeah, I'll. Uh, <clears throat> oh, that's funny. Okay, man. Well, we better we better end this one, man. All right. Yeah, while well, we're ahead, a yeah. little bit. <laughs> okay. Hey, thanks, guys. Thanks, Zach. Appreciate it, Bum. All right. See, see you guys. Well. Official statistician. Thank you, Bum. Exactly. All right, man. Later. See you guys. Bye.